Uh, dear ladies and gentlemen, I would like to welcome you at the uh, exhibit of the crucifixes, the photographs that I had taken uh, while I was traveling around the world. And especially, in, uh, most of them are taken in Poland and Venus in uh, uh, Lithuania. Uh, those crosses are telling a story. They are telling a story of love. And uh, when we meditate the, the uh, passion of Christ, so often we go in, into the wrong, wrong way of meditating. We think about who did this to Christ and why it happened. Not so much what it means. Uh, when I was buying these boards for the, uh, for the exhibit, uh, and in the store a conversation started uh, by the cash register. A lady asked me what I need them for. Am I an uh, art teacher? And I said, no, those are for the exhibit. So she was very interested. What about? What, the, what is the uh, exhibit about? And I said it's going to be about photographs of crucifixes. Oh no, 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 crucifixes, that's something I like to stay away from. And, and I look at her and I said, I understand it's a very difficult subject, it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's a heavy subject, it's hard to think about uh, Jesus crucified, however, it is a sign of love. And she said to me, yes it is. And that ended the conversation, however, she said something that is so important and she admits she agreed with something that is most important that jesus is asking us from the cross to meditate his passion in through the lens of love and this is also why this uh, exhibit is called cruciform love or crucified love um, I'll, I'll, so i will be speaking to you uh in between the songs uh so that you don't get to um, to board with me. So please, uh, another song is coming. A beautiful song. Because I can speak English, right? Yeah. 
it's, it's probably better because it will take more time and I might miss something because I already forgot to translate uh, about the story about the little girl. Uh, the little girl went to visit uh, the church with her religious teacher and by the cross she was uh, uh, praying and she was praying softly but soft enough, loud enough that her teacher could understand what she was saying. And the about six year old girl, she was standing for the crucifix, looking at the crucifix and she, and she was praying to Jesus with words, Jesus, who did this to you? And it is so important, it is so, so uh, it is uh, how often do we think the same? Uh, not only about what happened to Jesus on the cross, but also when something bad happens uh, in our lives, in the lives of the ones who we love, and we have no answers. But we do want to ask this question, who did this to you, or why? And, and Jesus on the cross is saying with the words when he prayed to his father, forgive them for they do not know, know what they are doing. Forgive them, my, forgive them father. Um, Jesus is showing us and telling us, do not stay focused on who did this and why, but look at me. Look at me that I did this all for you because I love you so much. And that is, the, that is the message that we should look for. It's a mystery. Because it is a mystery of salvation, it is a mystery of the cross, just like the mystery of, of, of any love, especially the perfect love that God loves us, um, is something that we might, will never fully understand. But God is so good and loving to us that he wants to reveal himself and his love. He wants to reveal each time to us uh, so that we might little by little understand more his love. And on the cross, uh, the mystery of love, um, one of these uh, drops, like in the ocean, of the truth is that uh, Jesus has uh, looked at the, at the people, at, the, at the, his mother, at his, at his disciple at the cross, and also at, even at the at the bad and, and the good thief with compassion and love and not so much finding and understand why or why somebody did something that was bad or um, made a mistake or or even um, who but more is how do we react to whatever happens in the world it is a mystery and because it is a mystery it is not only love the mystery of love, but also mystery of evil. And that is also something we tend not to meditate enough about. But love, we uh, understand it in some certain ways. We have experienced love. Um, the first love we have experienced was from our parents or somebody who was taking care of us as a babies. Uh, later, we have experienced love in many other ways in the world. But we also have experienced evil. And it is uh, very uh, difficult to understand. And the only way to understand the mystery, and it is also any mystery that, uh, that is from, from God, that God wants to reveal to us, is not to ask the question, why? I learned very quickly that um, uh, asking the question, why, why God, or why Jesus, is this and this happening, never got me anywhere. Uh, by asking this question, it, it has in somehow a way of the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, um, a complaint. There's a complaint in uh, this question, why? But also, there is uh, another part, why do I need to know this? There's a reason why we're asking. Because asking questions is good. God is asking, is actually requ requiring from us uh, to use our uh, um, our reason to understand his love. Uh, the Second Vatican II uh, has uh, emphasized uh, the reason in our faith formation. Um, it is a crucial part. And uh, understanding, asking question why, it is, it is good. However, well, why are we, what's the reason we are asking? Why do we want to find out? If we want to find out to find the truth, uh, that is uh, universal and that is God's truth, um, then it's fine. But usually we want to find the question, the reason why, so that we can 
judge another person and then and then prosecute them for whatever they did and find justice find justice already here on earth now jesus is saying to us don't ask question why just immerse in my mystery immerse in my love że Jezus z krzyża nas przywołuje nie tylko, żeby skupiać się na Jego męce i tak po prostu statycznie stojąc i, i, i medytując krzyż i pasję, ale do akcji. So the, what I wrote on this poster is that Jesus is calling us not only to uh, uh, passively uh, stand at the foot of the cross and to meditate uh, love of God, but, but also to act, to act with love. Uh, what happened is uh, that in my life, uh, my love for, for the cross, for the crucifix, and particularly, I uh, started uh, not that long ago. Uh, it was about a few years, and, and mainly the last two years of my travels, that I have taken these pictures, because something very special has happened at the foot of the cross. Uh, I found uh, an old uh, prayer, that is in English, it's from an old little uh, book, uh, that is the, the, the prayers uh, before the Vatican II, and it was uh, titled, At the Foot of the Cross. And I was praying that uh, prayer, and what would be the most uh, the, the perfect place for it will be at the foot of the cross, so by the crucifix. And I will start praying this prayer, it, I found later also in Polish, uh, and uh, later on I will also add some of my own words, and I will say to Jesus, uh, use me as an instrument of your love. And it was one amazing one about this prayer was that it had an immediate response. As soon as I kneeled at the foot of the cross and prayed that prayer, uh, God did not waste any time. And when I got up from the cross, there was already a man standing in front of me. My hands were, were, were trembling and I was thinking, well, God is asking me to do something now, what am I going to do? This man obviously is in distress and God is responding to my prayer. And uh, so I, 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 I listened to him, I uh, tried to find out how I can help him, why in this, uh, why he came up to me. And maybe I'll go back a little bit, uh, like a flashback, to get you in that situation, that story. It was, uh, it was in Poland, in the, in the church, uh, I was visiting my, bro visiting my brother, and uh, it was outside, 
the church. In Poland, many churches have crucifixes outside the church with a bench that you can kneel and pray. And I was just about to finish my prayers and go home. I was feeling a little cold already and hungry, and so I was about to go home. And then this man came up to me, and he looked in a terrible distress. Uh, I found out later on that he had a problem with alcohol. He was, has been drinking, a young guy, younger than myself, and that he has been uh, drinking for a week with no stopping, and he just hit this moment of realization that he cannot continue this anymore, and that also he cannot help himself, that he, need, that he cannot stop drinking. So this moment of, of this realization, he said he, he needed a priest. And I look on my phone, I called every priest I knew, uh, everyone was not responding or just telling me, Come, call me tomorrow. And I said to myself, God, was in my prayers, uh, with the inner voice, I said to myself, to God, I said, what, why are you not helping? Why, uh, where is the priest where I need them? And, and then I said to my, then my, my voice, uh, my, the Holy Spirit has inspired me and said, and I realized that this was on me. <laughs> that this one was on me and I was supposed to do something. Not only pass on. Uh, this problem. So I, uh, uh, so I, um, or this actually not the problem. It's this opportunity that God has given me. So what uh, happened next was we spent uh, some time on the bench uh, and talking, finding out what were the problems. His mother passed away from cancer. There were so many different things in his life for a long time already accumulating, and this was the most that he could take. Uh, and. Uh, I took him to the hospital. He realized he um, has agreed that he would go to the hospital. The first hospital wouldn't take him. We went. We found another hospital. Uh, they wouldn't take him. But it, almost the whole night went was was uh, passed. By that time, he felt a little bit better, and they they told him in the morning if he comes um, with a letter from his doctor, then uh, they would take him. And uh, he promised me that he will. He will go, and he did. The next day, he called me. I would call him back to check on him, and he did go to the doctor. And uh, it took him uh, a couple of weeks to get his life back together. He uh, was fired from the work for the job, but then he he found another job. And then um, we met for coffee, and he gave me this rosary. And he said to me, "Please pray for me every time you say this rosary. Remember me when you're praying." Now, um, that was probably the best gift he could give me. And I realized through this experience that God is uh, waiting for us, that God is waiting, that Jesus on the cross is, is waiting for us to, uh, to love him and, to lo and then to actively love one another. Um, when uh, my father passed away in May last, last year, I was flying to Poland as soon as I heard about what happened. And I wanted, I knew I couldn't be there the same, right this very moment, but God has been uh, very good to me that I was able to find a flight in the evening so I could be there the next morning. And otherwise I would have been there the, another day for my brother. And uh, so, that, so that was a grace. And when I was flying, that was a long flight, probably the longest flight, it's only eight hours, but those eight hours were, were the longest eight hours. And I was praying, I was praying and telling myself the whole time, God does not take to give more. God, God does not take away anything from us to give us more. And I continue this meditation at this, uh, that even though I didn't feel them at this moment, at this moment I didn't feel that God was giving me um, a more. Uh, naturally I was feeling that God was giving me less. Uh, and I was mostly worried about my father because he didn't go to confession. Uh, before uh, before he passed away, and that wasn't even that was a long time. It was a short time, but uh, I did. Uh, I got the, I received the grace over the phone the, the week before he, he died uh, to talk to him on the phone and to tell him about the spiritual confession uh, because he was sick and he couldn't go uh, leave the house by himself. Uh, this spiritual confession, uh, this spiritual. Um, Sorry, did I say it's spiritual confession? <laughs> I meant to say it's spiritual communion. And um, uh, so this spiritual communion uh, was, uh, was, a, was the best thing I could give to him at that very moment. Uh, that because um, he could not go to confession at this moment and uh, by himself. And if he just only wanted, if he really truly wanted, 
And when the time that he would meet Jesus, he really wanted to uh, to reconcile and to uh, to um, to be uh, to be in, uh, to be with him. And then, and he repented. I'm sure God will forgive him, and he will be uh, one day in heaven after uh, that. We, we are praying for that and offering the masses. But that spiritual um, that spiritual communion, I think it's a very important something that we don't uh, stress enough. Uh, in, uh, yeah, John Paul II has, wrote, has written uh, a lot about uh, spiritual um, communion. And so thinking about God doesn't give, give to give more, doesn't take away to give more. Thinking how much we are receiving with not realizing that we are receiving. Uh, this even just this opportunity that I could speak to my father uh, a few days only before he passed away and give him this gift of uh, spiritual communion, uh, of this prayer of, of, for spiritual communion, that was, uh, that was priceless. I could not exchange it for any other gift. Um, then at, at the funeral, I was at peace. Uh, that uh, this was time, that God would have not taken my father if it wasn't his time. That this was the best time, um, and a little later, I, after doing a, uh, a pilgrimage uh, into uh, footsteps of Sister Faustina, which you will see many uh, photographs from Vilnius, from uh, from Łódź, from uh, uh, from Krakow, and going uh, these footsteps uh, footsteps of Sister Faustina, uh, I received a lot of healing. Uh, and when I came back from this trip, it was about two months that I've been, three months in total I was in Poland, but stayed about two months before I could really be, be active, could do anything uh, more um, uh, about the, uh, my father's belongings. Uh, I prayed our father. I pray our father every day, several times a day, but this time I prayed it and I felt differently. When I prayed for this, for this first time, when I prayed our Father, I realized what those words mean. God never takes away to give us more. Because when I prayed our Father, I felt I have more of my Father in heaven. And those words gain meaning. And they are continuing with me, and, uh, and I try to share with everyone I meet. Because those words were something that, that, that helped me. It was a crutch to crutch or to, um, hold, to hold on and help me to walk until I finally was ready to receive the grace. Niech imię Najwyższego Boga będzie uczestniczył.
uświęcone. Pokonany został książę tego świata. Chwała Chrystusowi, który nas wybawił. Pokonany został książę tego świata. Chwała Chrystusowi, który nas wybawił. But also, never forget these words that are written and printed right there, that Jesus on the cross is not silent. He calls us to act with love. And on each individual, this picture that I have taken, uh, Jesus from the cross is calling to action, to do something. And uh, through, the, through the tour, I will tell you which those things were for me. They might be different for you. Thank you so much for coming. And please join us at the uh, refreshments.